Hello and welcome to morning show, I mean evening show <laughs> of chess and psychology here at the chess club. We are having um, a lot of fun in the chess club. There is a mini tournament going out there. It's nice to see people. So if you are in St. Louis, run. Make it here in person or here for the next three hours. Um, Jonathan, you're so cute. I am a grandmaster, just a woman title. It's okay, you'll learn someday. All right. Um, let's see. I am actually having a fun day. A little kind of butterfly. -y. Pisha is also um, having a fun time. There are a bunch of stray cats coming around. But I might be flying him at some point next month, so we'll see how that goes. Um, speaking of flying, a lot of the people from the World Cup are getting flown out of Russia because they keep getting eliminated. So that's why we're here. We did a kind of a cool poll and um, saw that you guys wanted to talk about the World Cup. So why not? We are here to please. Um, from World Cup, so my top picks were like Fabi or Lavon or Dominguez, you know, local people from here in St. Louis, which all got a little kicked out. So, um, yeah, I have to pick a new favorite. So, yeah, maybe I should stop picking favorites. So, my new favorite currently is Magnus because he's, I mean, he's bound to win. I mean, I might as well be right about it and make some money off of a bet. <laughs> so let's go. Uh, I'm actually not showing any game from him. I wanted to show the game that he played with Tari, but I also wanted to um, have a small, uh, have like a shorter game so I could fit in more than just one. Because usually when we go over one like 50 plus move game, we just cover it in the whole hour. So we want to do more than that. So the first, um, yeah. So this is kind of funny because all three of these games, black wins. <laughs> um, so I have three games ready for you. Uh, the first one is uh, one from the Women's World Cup, which is holding the same venue. I think the number of participants is actually half. So yeah, I was feeling a little butterfly. Um, yeah, so kind of spoiler warning, sorry. I mean, hopefully you're kind of caught up with some of the stuff that's going on in the World Cup, so it's not going to be too spoilery. Um, so yeah, the first one is I, um, I've i actually never played with either of these players, but they're very strong uh, one Grandmasters and International Masters, and I believe, yeah, I, I think Nino was the one that I was playing in, the turn in Qatar Masters, and she drew a Magnus on the first round. I've been wanting to show that one game. Maybe um, maybe next week. So let's go ahead and get started. Hold on, actually. First things first. How on God's green earth do I stop these arrows? I do not want. There we go. I don't like these arrows. There we go. So no, do not speak Spanish. I'm looking in the chat, but Spanish does not help me. So the one of the big reasons I'm showing this game is because of the very cool tactic that we will see towards the end of the game. And so far, the, there is not much to talk about right now. Uh, actually, I think today was the rest day. Also here for juniors and seniors was the rest day. So I mean, I guess today is the rest day everywhere. Um, so so far, we have a very pleasant, normal Spanish going on. I kind of want to know, uh, what do you guys, my live audience and my online people, usually play against Spurri Lopez? Do you actually get on this? Do you actually get to this position usually? Yeah. No, okay. Logical. Uh, is it hard to beat the lower rated? Uh, we'll yeah. Good, because I always thought that I wanted to confuse my opponents in the opening, so I always went for the weird G6, D6, 97 stuff. Um, let's see. No? Alright. No preference. I mean, I don't play as black. I play this as a Ah, that's I play true. Ruby, 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 Ruby. Oh, okay, yeah. I tried to love it as white. I really like the Queen E2 of the lines. It felt quite tricky. Anywho, yeah. Yeah, we have one Berlin in the chat too. 
All right, so let's go. Let's keep going. What I usually do is uh, either early or a6 or not. I kind of like to just get my bishop fianche to it, and then or like start with a6, d6, uh, d6, knight e7, or something along the lines of like sometimes d6 early, depending on how confusing I want to be. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, generally if you try to do the fianche, I think those fianche bishops got really famous in 2014, 15. Bunch of these um, giant players, Magnus, Bobby, all these players started playing it. So I picked up back in five, six years ago and I still like it. Yeah, um, nothing wrong with the normal lines though, but uh, what I wanted to emphasize is specifically in these like pawn structures so how do we feel what do you think we should do we definitely don't want opponent to get into uh we don't want opponent to have these two pawns isolated so kind of limits our choices right That sounds like the most logical one that we should definitely consider. So that's definitely option number one. Do we have an option number two or is that it? That seems like to be the most logical one, right? Because theoretically, I mean, yeah, we could try to maybe get the bishop up, but if we don't take it, if we play anything else, let's say, ah, no, well, not that. If we get the bishop out, then this is not going to be very pleasant. First of all, there is a pawn flying off of the board. But even if we weren't losing the pawn, this double pawn here is just torturous. We don't want that. So yeah, we got to take, take, and now what do we do? There, are, I've seen a lot of games like this growing up from... The first one that comes to mind is Nimzovich. I don't know why. But there's always like... Ideally, in the middle game, um, what do you think we should do? Where does this bishop belong? Should we push this pawn or not? Because this is not a very um, famous position right now. You might know the ideas of this pawn structure, but you don't necessarily have to know the exact move order of this. So what do we think? Okay, so you're, um, I agree, right now we have literally three options. Either you're going to get this bishop out or you're going to push right now. So what we're trying to figure out is should we push right now or no? I don't think there is a necessity to push, but which one do you think um, could has the best potential to make opponents uh, feel like more which one is tricky? So which one can like give the opponent the better chance of making mistake? Because a lot of chess uh, is not necessarily just about playing the best moves, but it's also about figuring out how to make your opponent um, in a position that they have a hard time finding the best moves. Yeah, I agree. Double pawns are not necessarily that pretty. All right, I feel like the chat is still thinking we. Mm, yeah. Um, if we play bishop b7, it gives like a lot of options, so maybe more. So the to, the one yeah. problem. Uh, so let's see. What do you think is the problem with bishop b7? What do you give to your opponent? Uh, the f5 square? Yeah. Ooh, too bubbly. Um, you might not necessarily jump in there right now because that's, I mean, you, you, you do want to play g6 on bishop g7 anyways. But um, 
if you were to play like bishop b7 then um, I feel like white would just get a little bit more momentum and just like start bringing pieces just a little bit faster this is not losing by any means you're more than I mean this is still very playable and both players are still developing but uh, it just it makes it a tad bit harder for black you have to kind of worry a little bit more about some things that you could have easily prevented because if you plan to play c5 just do it right now and then you, you're kind of like um, it's decisive you could I right now this knight's gotta decide should it go back should it try to jump around here actually this is a mistake what do you guys think this is a mistake <coughs> Yeah, exactly. Simply take over here. And voila. Anyways, um, yeah, so like something like knight c6 is also quite intriguing. Uh, because if the knight goes back, well, I'll just develop now attacking over here. And I can just uh, develop and later on I'm going to reorganize, get my bishop in the big diagonal and my knights will be useful here. I can try to jump to e5. This is, this is quite pleasant. Both bishops and both long diagonals, we like it. Alright, so um, what about knight c6? Do we have to worry about this? I mean, we'll, our queen literally has one sword to go, so that's not the question. But now the knight also has only one square to go. But so this knight from center, it kind of got into this awkward corner. But at the same time, we don't really have bishop b7 anymore. So is this a yay or a nay for white? It, yeah, so just in a measuring opponent's misery, that's that this is this knight c6 uh, makes opponent's life a little harder. So we like it. Why would we go knight f3 and just wait immediately for opponent to just get the pieces out? So it's a yay. It's also, it's not like a knight stuck there, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not stuck. Yeah, it can easily jump around if needed. And nobody can really attack it right now, anyways. So. It's kind of bugging this n the lack of bishop development. So we could consider something like g6, but uh, your pieces are very wobbly, so I wouldn't risk it. There's just like too much chances that opponent could just cook something out of your undefended pieces. So just get the bishop out. Uh, later on, you can try to relocate the bishop to f6. Hello, Eduardo. Well, why not? I haven't here for. I've been here pretty much the whole year and a half. What were you? All right. Um, so yeah, let's get these guys rolling. Now we're in a position that we still have to decide what do we want to do with this bishop. If we can't develop it right now, should we consider exchanging queens? If not, then we should probably move one of these rooks because we we need to kind of be able to. Um, Make, a, make it a little harder for opponent as well. We can't just, just respond to opponent's threats. It's a very fun table. Yeah, I think rook eight makes sense too. So, ideally, we shouldn't necessarily want to exchange queen. Oh well, that's stop bad mouse. We shouldn't <laughs> that too. We shouldn't want to exchange queens right away because then we would give up this square and this bishop is going to be problematic. 
but I, I feel like if that wasn't the case, if we had a better grasp on the position, we could consider um, exchanging queens because um, it's the position is fine for the end for when the queens are. I was gonna say end game, but just because we exchange queens is not necessarily end game. So we don't necessarily know if we want to exchange queens or not. So let's go with the move that we do know we want to do. So rook b8. Opponents could do b3, but uh, now we're going to maneuver this knight to over here. And then later on easily bishop f6 and it'll be fun. We like that. Uh, so rook b8. Why I just played rook b1. Develop. Uh, I think taking should have been played here because this bishop is going to become quite interesting later on so we don't it's better to not have to deal with that so yeah uh, this would be a better choice uh, yeah it's a little uh, problematic maybe later on if we were to actually gain more control of the center but what to do now so I think uh, white should have taken it but white decided to not white decided to be a little tricky now uh, white is like, I want to take over here first and then take your pawn. So now we got to decide. How much do we care about this pawn? Aww. Oh, M, that's very nice of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you like the Karakon. Um, are you trying to learn it from white or black? Because from white, I really liked the book. I've pretty much been playing the same variation with the Negi book uh, and as black one of my teammates wrote a Karakon book last year um, yeah I don't remember the name of the book but for white Karo Karo for black and bald there we go. I think that's what I had, yeah. Oh, that night is three. Ah. Well, no, that wasn't a Negus book. <laughs> yeah, that night is three was not a Negus book, but the uh, most of like the 97, 96 stuff were from there. Yeah, I think Bishop A8 makes sense, right? We don't we don't necessarily care about this pawn as much. And if you're going to eat it anyways, I'm going to try to keep my bishop. Why would I give my bishop and let you eat the pawn? So I'm going to keep it. Now you take. Now what do I do? Now we're in a, we're getting in the rhythm. The chat is quiet, my live audience is quiet. I lost 50% of the... Oh, Ben will be back, but... What is... Maybe, but your rook is doing okay right now. Ah, you're trying to go after the e4 pawn? Hmm. That could, that could, that does make sense. But what about uh, your bishop on e7? Because right now, these two pieces, like these are the pieces that could be improved. Oh, we could do the knight maneuver. Yeah, and yeah. And then I don't necessarily, I'm getting like chat from like bishop rook b6, but why would I put push your queen to go back in a good spot? Same kind of with rook b4, because when you play rook b4, you're attacking here, but you're kind of pushing the queen to go back. Wait, actually, I think I made a mistake, but that's the first thing, but a3 also makes sense, because then you gotta move this rook again. Sorry. That's why it's quiet. <laughs> it's okay, I'm not naming any names. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, my wisdom teeth are coming out. It's so weird. Every, every morning I wake up, I'm like, huh, I bite the inner cheek, oh my god, it's the mess. I can't wait to be in my 30s and done with teeth growing. Uh, 
30 to 60 is a good age. Then after 60, the teeth will start to go. Actually, never mind. I, I saw know. Him in his 30s, I wish I was in my 20s. Oh, yeah. Teeth wise, I wish, in, I, wish I was done with teeth growing and these problems. Uh, what are we going to do with the dark square bishop? That's the that's the primary question. Yeah, so that's why uh, there was a suggestion to try to shuffle this knight around so that we could also get this bishop. So how do we like that? I think knight g4 is actually very reasonable. Uh, you're just gonna try to gain more space with your knight, but um, Nino played a different line. Um, what do you guys think? How do we feel about this? I like this knight moving, but d5 also kind of looks fun, right? I don't know if I would play d5 in the real game because I am a big fan of just moving this knight around, but at the same time, it does make sense to want to push d5 at some point. So, something like right now d5, I kind of like it. I kind of am having a little love hate relationship with it because let's say take, we take back. Then how do, what do we do? There is like, yeah, you open up the bishop, so that's good. But your pieces are not that ready. And uh, white played the correct move. White played queen d3. And now what do we do? We still have a lot of development to do. We don't really have an attack just yet. But this bishop is looking pretty sharp. So for the price of a pawn, I like this position. I just kind of wish my bishop was here. <laughs> so, yeah. So I like this. Right now, what do we do? Actually, let's make my wish come true. Let's get this bishop. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, let's make my wish come true. All right, now what do we do? <laughs> About my wisdom teeth, I <laughs> I met up with a dentist last year, and I mean October, November, and they were like, your wisdom teeth are coming out fine, we don't need to take them out. And he also told me that three out of four will not come out, and two out of those three are coming out as we speak. And it's so just weird. It doesn't hurt, but yeah, next month I have a lot to do. I want to go to Chicago for a few days to get a UK embassy visa. Then I'm going to fly the kitty. Oh, that will be fun. He's never been on a plane. All right, let's come back to the chest of it. Um, we, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted on the status of my flying cat. Well, first, he's going to go on a train, actually. He's been on cars. He's fine with that. All right, how do we feel about this position? Let's come back to chess, because if you let me talk about Tishi, you, you will never end. So, Queen f5. Uh, not opposed to it, but I don't necessarily know exactly where my queen wants to go. Ideally, if I could get my queen to this diagonal, that would be kind of cool. But... Centralizing the queen is good, but also uh, these rooks could benefit from some movement. No, actually, never mind. I was thinking rook e8, but then this knight can go to b3 and could get nasty. Um, maybe not that, but I don't know why I don't like queen f5. You can't move the knight because of f2, but can you like maybe... Okay, you can't really kick the bishop because then I'll just take over here. That's what I'm talking about. 
Wait, no, why? Why, why, Dorsa? Stop talking. First calculate. Don't blunder. But no, this just... Wait, why is this wrong? Seriously, why is this wrong? Us? Oh. So I was initially correct to not like this because you can take it and knight can take it because of queen and if pawn takes it now you get to take over here and take over there. Actually queen f5 is inter interesting. The only problem with it is this knight b3 because um, white does want this knight b3 anyway like uh, right now even right now knight b3 could be interesting but there is this knight b4 so that's why white played bishop d2 so now they want to play this knight b3 so in order to how do we think uh, we can't really stop knight b3 but what do you think we can do uh to be fair i don't uh in my opinion the uh, best move here was not played in the game but the very practical move was played. You don't, you're not gonna be able to see all the engine moves and all, find all the best moves in your game, but uh, as long as you find the practical ones and you calculate better than your opponents, you should be good. Sacrificing the the exchange. Um, mm, your pieces are not ready. Like if your rook was like here, yeah, okay, I would do that. I would sacrifice that. Eating the pawn on b two. I mean, well, you lose over here. Uh, so this is this is this pawn over here is a good um, anchor for your pieces. I keep kicking the table. Can you go back? Yeah. Now they still want this. I got a very fun chat about seeing flashes of light due to um, Optical nerve being touched by teeth roots and I have a, I lost it for a second What? <laughs> yeah, I mean Wait, I don't know how that would work your optical nerves are Ah, if it's no. I I know a decent amount about human anatomy, but Teeth is not my expertise All I know is I don't want to have to go to dentist Ever Okay, once a year I tried to do one of these whitening strips. I did it one time for an hour and my whole, like my teeth just felt like they were falling out. It was like when you chew like gum and then you do cold water for like, and I had to go to pharmacy and get like a numbing gel Ugh. for my mouth. Yeah. I learned my lesson. I like my teeth natural. You're very descriptive. Thank you. <laughs> because I can also talk about the, the nail on the chalkboard, but. <laughs> That never actually bothered me. All right, um, yeah, so we're in a very uh, critical slash weird position. Opponent wants a bunch of stuff. We potentially have a lot of things that we want to do, but the biggest problem is we don't know what to do about the knight. And I don't think anybody can help us at this point. So um, this is the star of your game. We would ideally like to keep this bishop, but if I have to choose between them, I'm going to keep my light squared bishop. So let's bring more help for that. And this rook b6, it's a little bit weird because still knight b3, and I don't really know how would black continue because you are going to lose this bishop, and it's not, it's not, I mean, it's a little complicated, and this would give white a better chance, but. So the best move here was actually knight b4. I, I, I agree, it's a little weird. And then take, you would take it back with the rook. Again, c3 stuff done doesn't work because you can take over here first and then you can take over there. And there's a bunch of cool um, dropping queens. 
So that's that's one thing to consider. And if something like that, yeah, but still, like C3 is not a threat. And like you have these two cool bishops, this knight, and right now that knight is looking a little ridiculous and uh, this knight is also not serving any purpose. So like you have a better position, but it's still complicated. Knight b4 is the best move, but rook b6 is also quite practical, especially because opponent also made a mistake. Why is there these things here? <laughs> Bad leeches. How do I... Ah, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna mess with this. I don't know how to get rid of these. Let them be. Yeah, so c3, now what do we do? This is actually another critical position because you have to try to figure out because if you move this bishop well then this knight's gonna jump around you can you can't do this either because well, again this will fall there is so what do you do after c3 that's why rook b6 is so beautiful because you have to have this move ready against c3 and um spice muffin yeah i did i saw that morris ashley is gonna be covering it which i think is very cool um, I, I would want to watch that. So yeah, NBC covering chess championships. Yeah, why not? They should have done it years ago. We also probably need like a sport, one of those cool um, chess models. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. What was I thinking about? Ah, oh, yeah, a few years ago, Sport Illustrated did like an interview. Like they followed me around in my campus for like a whole day i actually cleaned my dorm because they were coming and um like me fabi and wesley three different days they just kind of like followed us around which was so weird because i had to like get permission from my professors that like they could follow me around which again i don't i never understood what happened to that interview that they did they took some really cool pictures i dressed up they never published it. Neither, neither one of us. Like, they didn't publish mine, Fabi's, or Wesley's. That was like three years ago. You said Sports Illustrated? Yeah. It was oh. during the US Championships back in 2018. That's what, when was I was. Was it just online, maybe? I never saw it. Because, like, they had it all set up upstairs, and then, like, they sat us down, they did this, and then they followed us around for a whole day. And, uh, I want the pictures. Anyways, uh, so what do we think? Yeah, unfortunately, Alireza got eliminated. Yeah. I'm sure you'll have another chance to qualify for candidates, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we do knight takes c3? That, that would be fun, wouldn't it? Um, the problem with knight takes c3, I see what you want. I see that you want, if the knight takes, then you're gonna do the nasty queen e thing. But what if just the pawn takes? You did my mistake. Uh, yeah, you mean. forgot about the knight <laughs> protecting the queen. I did that mistake about two minutes ago. So, we said no to moving this bishop, right? We can't move the bishop, we can't take over here, so what's the other option? Moving into turn piece. Yeah, so but how? What should we attack? We're not touching these stuff, so we should be attacking a piece of an equal value. I think a lot of us are making the same mistake. I'm getting a suggestion for a knight before. What if just take? You don't have this. The knight takes and then the knight's defending the queen. The queen is not free. There will be a knight defending it. Um. We could attack these knights. Mm -hmm. I don't think attacking this knight is uh, enough because even if you do attack it, then this takes on the bishop is defending the knight. So we should be attacking this knight. Yeah, chat got it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think f5 is kind of fun. 
All right, now what should we do here? I mean, we're attacking this. If the knight moves away, let's say the knight moves away, now we can do all this nasty knight c3 and stuff because there is no more knight defending f2 to defend the, the queen. The whole circle. Uh, yeah, so f5 is kind of fun, but... And I think here is white, but white is already in a pickle, but white started to go really bad, really fast. So take, now we take back. Something like queen h3 might have been a little more interesting. You pin me, I pin you. I mean, still tries to gain some activity for white, but all right, so take, take, Queen c4, keep in mind taking is not that pretty because we have this bishop here, so all we gotta do is move this knight. Honestly, b4, I kinda wanna go over here. Yeah, you know, a bunch of different options. So, uh, white went queen c4 to pin us. How much do we care about this pin? Because if we care, then we have to move. If we don't care, then we have some other targets to attack. <laughs> Raymond, that's funny. I mean, I don't think any of us posed in a swimsuit for Sports Illustrated. They just walked, I mean, follow us around for normal stuff. I don't walk around in bikinis. So, I don't think Fabi did that either. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not that day. Maybe not that day. I know he's a, a physically active person. He's like very into sports, tennis, swimming stuff, but I don't think that's a requirement for Sports Illustrated. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, Queen F5, I like it. Let's go for here. Now, Queen F5, let's say Rook F1. Uh, right now, White's position is already collapsing. Um, here, the best move is honestly to just take over here. And your pawns are so, so, so pretty. You can't even really take back because now I'll just have rook g6. And now this is another problem. This is like, this is just collapsing. But uh, black rushed into a little bit and just played rook g6 first. White had to take over here. White missed it. That's what I'm saying. Like a lot of chance is practical. So white missed this. And now this is a problem. Uh, you would have to play something like queen h3. And then bring your rook back because you have to deal with these but defend that. There's like so much, you would kind of create more drama in this. Whereas if you just took it, white can't just simply take back because now rook g6, there is no pin and you kind of like win a tempo. You kind of win that, um, you're not self pinning anymore. Yeah. So rook g6, white made a mistake and now the correct move was played take back and queen f3. Queen f3 is such a logical move. You, you're not threatening checkmate right away, but you are kind of like setting up. You're going to the right diagonal. You're setting up to move these pieces away. And I like it. I really, really, really do like it. Queen c4, very easy. King moves away. Queen c5, chill stuff, e3. Knight c4, all right, now what do we do? This feels like our Friday tactics. If I was light, I would also be super scared. Probably about 10 moves ago, I would start to I mean, honestly, knight f4 also should give you some fun stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that would be very fun. I actually really like this. I wish actually this was played. Anyways, no, white, uh, don't don't play knight f4. Yeah, first move the queen. Um, not queen h1 though. Queen h1, there is this f3. Guys, this is mate in three moves. We can do this. You're right about the ideas, like everybody sees the idea. You gotta, this is something here. But uh, I think we got a little overexcited. Yeah, just go queen g2, voila. You take it, check, you remove it, checkmate. Wait, is this checkmate here? Checkmate, yeah. 
What's more beautiful than this? I should have an answer. Let's move it along to Fabi's game, the one that got him eliminated. Elin el uh, kicked out. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna scroll through the, the beginning of this game quite fast. Oh, yeah. Because I don't have much to say about the opening and I just really want to get to that nasty night part. It was very fun because there was a lot of cool meme online about the opponents because um, I think like in the opponent's culture I have trouble pronunciating so uh, I'm gonna just go with Rinat. I, I can't say it. It, it gets funny for me. <laughs> and okay. so we'll just go with Rinat. That should be it. Yeah. I say Fabi, we say Rina. There we go. Let's have everybody um, in Farsi. It would be Pesar Khale, which is like cousin fleet. That's a very weird translation. Okay. Um, let's just uh, let's just get back to chess of it, cause yeah. So I'm gonna scroll through the beginning parts because this is a normal Carlsbad pawn structure with a bad bishop, but uh, it got very awkward for Fabi. Uh, towards the middle game going to end game this is funny because this is a novelty and um, I thought it was quite interesting g4 is usually the main idea but this is following the same path because of this bishop and because of the pawn structure um, white is hoping to do stuff in the queen uh, king side black is hoping to do stuff in the queen side we got some normal stuff going on but I am still scrolling because I really, really, really want to get to that nasty ending. So we're kind of approaching there now, about maybe 10 more moves. I could have actually started from position. I don't know why I did not do that. Were you saying something about a meme? That oh yeah, forgot about that. Um, the opponent um, has like, I saw this funny meme today, like how he used his knights and um, like in his culture, it's very like, they're very good with horseback riding, so, so I should have had that meme ready. Dothraki Too late. Huh? Dothraki? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think he could qualify for because of this game. Yeah, so let's keep going for this game. I'm just trying to just uh, give you guys an idea of how we got to that position. I don't necessarily want to talk about talk about it because uh, this is not the point of this game the point of this game is to see how actually Bobby came below 2800 I'm a, I'm a big fan of him I don't know why I'm showing this game yeah well too late now um, so now is actually like one of the first points that black started to play weird so we're gonna enjoy that um, so Fabi is still trying to form a nice attack. We got some good bishops, but Black still has extra material, and this pawn is also quite killing. So first things first, right now, who do you want to be, white or black? And don't look at this zero one over here. Just look at the position. Because this position doesn't determine who's going to win. I really should have done this from a position. Alright, I'm seeing two whites, one black, two black. Three blacks, three whites. I guess that's. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, white has an interesting pap, like pawn structure, but black has this extra exchange. So, yeah. Let's see, what if the uh, right now, if I told you there is a cool move called Bishop of Seven, would you still want to be black? Which will be found? Uh, 
So now you can't take it to the rook because that would be a good day actually. And this is falling. There are a lot of flying pieces that I've seen watching the commentary. So that's that's the that's one of the positions that I want to talk about because of this cool bishop of seven. So Fabi actually got back in the game because like five moves ago, black was black had clear advantage. Right now, white is still holding. White is trying. This is like I don't want to say equal, but both have equal chances. Nobody's better. Um, but black has two rooks and this pass pawn, so white's got to be really careful. I like this king g2 move. Now, black to move, what do we do? You know, Fabi found this. Fabi is playing as white. Fabi found this bishop of seven. He did it. But Fabi lost this position, yeah. Let's see. Black to move, what do we do? Logically, this rook is good over here. This rook is good over here. So probably the knight, right? Yep, okay, let's get the knights rolling. And, okay, Fabi played e4. A, a, a little, a little dangerous, but I mean, you have to. And this, now, what do you do with the king? Do you go back or do you go up? Up is dangerous, but so is back. So, what do you think we should do? Hello, Chicago. I'm actually hoping to be in Chicago, not this weekend, next weekend. If I can get an appointment. We gotta go up, right? So let's see, what's wrong with king g1? Or h1? Yeah, I said g1 because the h1 just looks scary. What's wrong with king g1? What could black do right now? Actually, nobody's saying the correct move. No, nope. the knight is good where it is because it's protecting this square so the king can't come up. We got a good rook here because it's cutting the king as well. What is the screaming? The king in the back rank can't come up. What type of um, checkmate ideas does that give us? Oops. Yeah. yeah. Rook a5 would be a good idea. And uh, you gotta defend it like that, and now this queen is stuck. Wait, can we just do b3? Oh, wait, no, there's queen g4 check. So let's just do h5, so we stop queen g4 check. Then we wanna slowly, slowly push this and make it a fun game. So yeah, actually, this would be lost. So Fabi correctly found king h3, black went knight g6. This is the meme that I was referring to with the knights. So, knight f4 is coming up. What should we do? I have to stop kicking the table. Um, we know what black wants. We're trying to figure out what should, what's the best move for Fabi as white. Ha. Um, layman, actually, Fabi did play queen c4, which was, did not work. Got really ugly. 92. Uh, 92 is worth considering. I agree, but the problem with knight t2 is rook just comes up, and now I'm attacking, I'm t gonna take over here, I could bring different rooks to g2, this is also just sad. 
So white has a single move that can hold. Let's see if we can find it. No, knight e2 doesn't work. Knight f5, I'll still do knight f4 and I'll eat your queen. We're trying to save the queen. Queen going to b3 or c4 does not work. Queen a6, I'm not sure how that helps. There's still knight f4. I'm telling you, there is a single move that can hold. At this point, I feel like people are just shooting moves. All right, all right, I think we're getting somewhere. Um, since everybody pretty much said every other, every possible queen move, <laughs> so let's just get going, uh, unless there's something, it's okay. So queen e3 doesn't work because check, up, check, bye. Uh, queen e2 doesn't work because kaboom, queen f1 doesn't work, well there's a rook here. Uh, queen c2 doesn't work because h5 and I want to give you a very nasty checkmate. Same for queen c4, I still want to give you a nasty checkmate. Queen b3, similar idea. Queen a6, I'm assuming similar idea. I still want to give you this nasty checkmate. So the problem is this nasty checkmate. The problem isn't just the check, it's the nasty checkmate. So in order to be able to stop it, uh, you gotta fight back. You gotta actually attack something. So let's go attack over here. Now if you give this check first, king up, now I'm attacking over here. And you don't have the, enough time to play these two moves because your rook will fall. So that's why uh, this, could, this is the only move that could save and then you just immediately start attacking other pieces and then the knight got to move and then there's like other checks and there's like a lot of stuff happening. So that's why we like it. That's why this should have been played instead of queen c4. Queen c4 looks like it's such a sophisticated move, but at this point we needed punch, punch, punch stuff. Yeah, that will make a good thumbnail. Um, so queen c4 it is, that it actually queen c4 is not, and now h5. And there is a nasty checkmate coming up. Yeah, I mean Fabi missed it, so it's okay if you guys did, so I mean, I'm pretty sure he'll, he'll be pretty sore about this knight for a while. Well, there's Sinkfold Cup coming up, so he can't be that sore. Um, yeah, he does have a pretty good chance of getting back his 2800. Anyways, yeah. Uh, H5, and we got this pieces coming up. The only way to defend it is to give up the knight. And the knight goes bye-bye, and the rest is just painful. Uh, there is still a lot of fight to be done because, you know, there's still three pawns, two a knight and two rooks, but your king, like, your king is just not doing, not, not really, be, not holding. It doesn't matter how much you can push, your king is the big problem, and eventually you would lose these pawns one by one, and with little inaccuracies, I don't think it matters that much, it's just... Painful. See, another, another nasty rook move with a knight coming up. Yeah. Queen e1, check. Ouch, kind of hurts me to watch it. And Fabi just resigned. All right. I'm, uh, I kind of wanted to do one last one, but I'm not sure if we'll have time for it. This should be a really quick one. So we'll do this and then we'll do the break and do the switch to Twitch. So let's do this as the last game that I wanted to show. Uh, 
wait, nope, nope, nope. I wanted to look at it from White's perspective, because White made it wrong. Wrong move. So, yeah, this is the position we are looking at. Um, black kind of started to... Black is going after this pawn, right? But first things first, let's just check our um, <laughs> end game understanding. So black is better, right? I have an extra pawn. But the problem is that there's a bishop and I'm eating this. So is this the right square? Is this the right pawn? Or is this the right pawn? Which pawn should black try to keep? Let's say black, white will give up the knight for a pawn. And which pawn do you think is best for white to try to grab? Yeah, exactly. So it's important to be able to grab this pawn. Wait, yes, not this pawn. Because your king will have a safe spot right here if there's this pawn left. So taking over here right now doesn't help you. However, we do have a, f but like something like knight d3 also doesn't help you because you're, you can't reach this pawn fast enough and black will easily promote and that's actually what happened in the game and you can't stop it there's like a knight c1 but okay i can stop it so see that's like not that's not unstoppable so knight d3 is the wrong move what is the right move Obviously, it's a move with the knight, so thank you about that, but um, where to go? We said not to d3, we don't want to take over here, we could, but so I think these are your remaining squares. Good luck. May odds will ever be in your favor, because literally this is like, I either you find the best chance of having a draw or it's bye bye World Cup. So tell me more. Don't just don't just give me a move. So let's say okay. First of all, knight h5 is bad because I just take here. We established that. Um, knight g2. I'm not a big fan. Bishop f2 on your knight is kind of stuck. You'd have to go back. So that's out too. Um, so we have three three remain uh, four remaining options. Which one gives you the best chance? Exactly, why does g6 look decent? I'm actually questioning that too. What's wrong with e6? I'll just take over here, and what are you gonna do next? Like knight over here? Okay, I'll move it. Your knight can't get to it in time. So e6 is also out. Let's say you do play this knight g6. I might play bishop g3 to limit your knight. Yeah, so I want you guys to calculate. That's that's basically my thing. Four possible choices. Calculate. I'll give you guys maybe just another minute. And uh, maybe I would appreciate it if you don't just give me one line, one move. You like tell me if knight, I don't know, d5, black will take over here. Then we do this. Like give me like about two moves. Like white does this, black does this, white does this, black does that. Knight 
Wait, what? Oh, G6? Knight G6? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> like I put the board. Knight G6, bishop G3, and then, um, and then knight E7. And then number two moves away from a pawn. Fair point. And yeah, and you can't really stop that. Um, yeah, let's see. How, do we, how does the chat feel? How do we like knight g6? Then we could potentially try to get to this pawn that way. Because the, the goal is to eat this pawn, right? So how do we get there? e6 doesn't help us. e6, I mean, it's a lot of hassle. If you go knight e6, take knight d4. I do want to do this, but king goes, and then it's not, it's not in time. We don't have enough time. Similar issue with knight e2. Take... What are you going to do next? Knight d4 to want to go there. Again, I'll move my king and I'll move my pawn. We don't have enough. That's why knight g6 is the best one, because I force you to move your king, um, move your bishop. And now if you do like bishop d8, now I'll just go from this route and this will fall. And if, oh, if you go bishop g3, again, I'll go, I'll get to c6 and I'll eat this. And this is a draw. It's just very important to know that this is a draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the bishop uh, is not controlling the square that the pawn is becoming queen, you're not going to be able to win it. Yeah, that's happened to me in one of my games against when I was like 2100 against the international master, and I just wanted to. Yeah. You were the. I was the victim of. You, you had the more. You had the yes. Of the yes. Sorry. Uh, oh, I think I see one of my students here. Nice. Yeah. Good job. Nice. So, yeah, now uh, we're going to do a short, I think, break. I don't know what to call it. Switch to Twitch. So, yeah, we're going to switch to Twitch and analyze your games. So, if you have games ready, do send them over and we will analyze them. Make sure that they're in Leech's format and make sure that you will be there in about, I'm going to say, 10 minutes. So, shouldn't take longer than that. All right, everybody, this was kind of fun. Uh, I can't believe next time, we're, well, actually next week, we'll have a champion for the juniors and seniors. Not the World Cup yet, but it's kind of fun to follow. So, make sure to follow the World Cup. Make sure to follow the uh, seniors and juniors happening. And we'll see you in a little bit on Twitch.